If my neurologist is watching this, see I do listen to you. This feels a bit like the first day back to school after the summer holidays. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I've not actually filmed a video in about six or seven weeks. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I've not really been and I'm not really in the greatest of mental states, nor physical states. My parents are on holiday. I'm not exactly going to throw a house party. So I thought I'd take advantage of the fact that I've got an empty house but nobody's going to overhear me talking to myself. When I was on Instagram there was always loads of eating disorder tag photo questions and they were all the same sort of thing like lowest weight, highest weight, BMI, whatever. All designed to fuel the competitiveness of one's eating disorder. Since when do I say the word ones? And so I thought I'd make my own. And I didn't want to make it kind of like the questions that you normally get or like that I'd seen before. I wanted it to kind of be interesting and possibly funny. Again, it's kind of raising awareness about the humiliating and embarrassing really shit sides to an eating disorder. If anyone else wants to do this, then feel free. Do your own video um, or do it on Instagram. So this is the non-triggering use those because I hate that word. Non-triggering eating disorder tag video. Obviously people are triggered by different things. I apologize if I do say anything that someone might find triggering, but there's no numbers or anything involved. That's why I've said non-triggering. But the first question is triggers. What are my triggers? That word I only really came across when I joined Instagram. I never really thought of something as a trigger. It was more that's upset me enough to cause me to feel bad enough to eat less. It was only that I was like, oh, it's actually got a word. And then when I used it in context with some, in, in a conversation with my mum, and my mum was like, what the fuck's a trigger? And I was like, well, that's what it is. It is a trigger. Oh God, sorry, a bee just flew past my window. <laughs> it does kind of make sense because it is a trigger. And using it in terms of all my illnesses. Catching bees trying to get in my room. You can't fly through glass, you're not Superman. But I never really had that word. I found that on Instagram people use it too freely and it really pissed me off. I, I feel the need to do that. Yeah, my personal triggers would be people getting to eat more than me and still losing weight whilst I put on weight because I fucked my metabolism up so badly. I only lose weight if I eat nothing. I know some people are like, if you eat more to sort your metabolism out. No, I, it, 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 it really doesn't work. My body is fucked. Trust me, my body is fucked. So there's people being a lower weight than me and that being their highest weight, if that makes sense. Because I'm five foot 11, if there's someone that's five foot and I weigh more than them at my lowest weight, and that's their highest weight. Is that the right way around? You know what I mean. It's just basically just numbers in general. Just numbers in general. But also not necessarily eating and numbers wise. I find beautiful and pretty people triggering for me. But what I find the hardest, because this affects my eating and my mental health, is people having lives. So friendships, love and having support systems and achievements. And you can't really escape that. Like genres of books that I used to love that I can't read anymore because I find it triggering because I'm like, well, I can't ever have that. I've never had that and I will never have that. And that kind of triggers my eating and my depression and all of that. So it's kind of a double whammy. People having support systems I find really triggering because it's like they deserve it, I don't deserve it, I'm a piece of shit. Blech. Basically over the years I've kind of found so many different things that trigger me that I kind of, it's kind of just accumulated into just a massive pile of everything. Everything kind of just exploded around the time that my feet died and I kind of just imploded so I, I just became a nervous ball of energy or lack of energy. 
I struggle to deal with anything anymore. So I kind of just don't deal with anything or don't deal with anything healthily. I was just in the middle of a 10 minute spiel answering the next question when my camera died. Sucks to be me. So I will start it again. Most humiliating moment. I had two, both toilet related. First one being weeing in public. I went through a phase of obsessively walking around town. I was doing about seven hours a day. I would take water with me to make sure that I was um, had something to drink and I had toilet stops along the way. Some of them were kind of not human toilet stops, shall we say. Some of them were kind of um, yeah, behind trees and in ditches and stuff, which sucks. These seven hour walks a day also included Christmas day shows how fucked up my brain is but yeah one day I didn't quite make it to the toilet and I weed myself I was wearing two pairs of leggings and a coat and it was kind of drizzling you know it wasn't that noticeable next humiliating moment when I went for my three month period of not eating and when I started eating again I became incontinent I started pulling myself and I had to wear a nappy. It was when it was starting to get better. I went out shopping. I was on an electric scooter. I literally just went into Boots to spend a voucher because it was like just over the Christmas period. And I was like, please don't come out, please don't come out. Because I'd just been to the toilet and I just was going to go to Boots and then I needed to get back to the toilet. And I was like, please don't let me shit myself, please don't let me shit myself. And I did. The next question is the funniest moment caused by my eating disorder. And I wanted to put this in there because I hadn't eaten this order for a long time and you know, there's going to be something funny. Even if it's just one of those so sad it makes you laugh funny things. But this actually is funny. I was in Claire's Accessories. This was a long, long time ago. And you know they have those earring stands like that go all the way around and all the way down? And I was wearing a long floor length coat and my jeans were a little bit too big. I bent down to look at some earrings on the bottom. When I stood back up, my jeans stayed on the floor. But because I was wearing a long coat, nobody could see. And I was like, oh, I've got no trousers on and I need to try and maneuver this so that nobody works out what I'm doing. So I kind of bent back down as if I was looking at the earrings again and kind of tried to hook my trousers in and then you know like wiggle my bum into them again so that was quite funny so the next question is the biggest loss that the eating disorder has caused there's so many things that are obvious is obviously my feet life everything so I thought I would be a bit random with this and tell you something that you didn't know and that is my ass cheek my right ass cheek to be specific and my right upper thigh. You're probably thinking, Charlotte, what are you talking about? When my feet started dying, obviously my nerves were very fragile. And my doctor... See, if you look really closely, then you can actually see the disgust in my face when I have to think about my doctor, or just how the NHS treats someone with a mental health problem in general. Decided to give me an injection in the wrong place. It hit my sciatic nerve and I lost all the feeling in my right bum cheek and down my right leg. So I have no feeling in my right bum cheek and down to my, kind of down to about my knee. And it's never come back. So yeah, it's another tick as to A, why eating disorders suck and B, why my doctor sucks. So it's obviously not the biggest loss my eating disorder has caused me, but I just wanted to tell you something you didn't know. You probably didn't want to know that I have no feeling in my half of my ass, but you know. It's quite, it was quite funny because when I went to the toilet after having the injection, and I kind of went to sit on the toilet and I was like, what the fuck is going on? It's always grossed me out, like when you have Emma cream on and you touch it and you know you're touching it and you can't feel it. So I really don't like it, it really grosses me out, so I can't touch any of that part of my leg because it makes me cringe, it's like scratching chalk Okay, balls. the next two are food ones, 
So if you want to skip ahead for them because you don't want to hear about food, skip ahead. Safest food. Um, a safe food for me has always been egg whites because it's obviously protein and low in calories. I've always loved eggs, it's one of my favourite foods. Don't hate on the yolk, they're good for you. I only really like yolk when it's like runny yolk. I don't really like yolk when it's like in omelette or frittata. I only like egg white frittata or egg white omelette. So that's a genuine preference and also it's a safe thing. So for me a safe food has always been like an egg white frittata which is grilled omelette in case you didn't know. What else is safe? I hate the fact that protein has become safe. Obviously vegetables, but I have a problem with digesting vegetables. They make me gain weight. I like Greek yogurt. Fire. 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 I'm just gonna say what we're all thinking. It's fudge. Why can't we just call it fudge? That's what it looks like. Cereal used to be a safe food before I chewed and spat. That doesn't sound grammatically correct. I will get onto that in a minute. It's no longer a safe food. But it was safe in that if I had something on my meal plan, if I was eating, and I didn't want to eat that, then and I was panicking about what to eat, then I'll just say, okay, I'll have a bowl of cereal instead. I went through a period of a few months where I was chewing and spitting, but the only thing that I chewed and spat was cereal. And now, I have problems digesting cereal and I can only think that it is as a, as a result of that and it also doesn't fill me up because I think I would chew and spit so much cereal my mind would need a lot of cereal. I don't know. Bizarre. Most avoided food. And I purposely avoided the word fear food. It's not so much fear because it's not like I jump away in horror if I see it but I wanted to think of the foods that I've had the least since I've had an eating disorder and that is takeaways. I've not had a single takeaway since my eating disorder began um, as in Chinese or Indian or pizza. Because unknown calories have always been my biggest thing even if I felt able to take that on you can't just order it for yourself and all of my other fears I, I've eaten in hospital, so that's kind of why they are my most avoided. That and pure sugar, because they're kind of the only things that you probably don't have in hospital, so they're kind of the things that I have had the least, because I've not had them at all. Because it's not like you would get a packet of Haribo for your snack in hospital, or you would get an Indian takeaway in hospital. Although in Leicester, they would have a curry night and you could opt to have the choice of the takeaway or the hospital food. I wasn't part of that group. The next question is lowest moment and I was stressed due to my eating disorder because I've had lower moments than this. I'm answering this just based on my eating disorder. I would say losing the ability to walk would be my lowest moment that's a moment but I guess that's probably obvious although that kind of doesn't pair in comparison to my lowest moment ever and the last question is my most missed thing pre-eating disorder this is kind of a hard one because I'm trying to think of answers that are kind of eating disorder based because obviously I was ill before my eating disorder developed I can't just say life there was the crossover, so being well and just not being ill, but that wasn't to do with my eating disorder, if that makes sense. But I think the thing I miss the most that I can think of, like right now, like it sounds stupid, but the eating disorder has taken away dancing from me, and it sounds stupid, but up until my feet, um, you know, I could say, oh, friendship or whatever, but I've never had that. Um, I've never had 
a chance of life. I've never had. I've never had. I've never had certain things to miss. So I can't really answer this properly. But one of the things that I really, really do miss is dancing and dance. And even though I was shit, I loved it. And the eating disorder robbed me of being able to dance because obviously my feet was directly caused by my eating disorder. And I would say dance. So I hoped you liked this video. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. You can follow me on Twitter if you like. I'm a bit shit. Hi, this is Charlotte from the future here, coming to say two things. One, tomorrow you are going to dye your hair a semi-permanent purple colour. Don't do it, because when you try and wash it out, it won't wash out. Then you'll have to bleach it out and your hair will turn green. It's going to be a disaster. It's very unattractive. And the second thing is for all you lovely people, telling you that I have set up a blog. And the links are down below and it should be across the screen now. So please check it out and I hope you like it. Thank you. I'll leave my link in the description. Subscribe to me if you like it. Write below your answers if you want to. Feel free to do this tag on YouTube or Instagram if you want to, share it. I'm going to go and retreat into my ball of cushions now. Bye. I'm trying not to freak out about the fact that I look like an ugly man in drag because I've had to plaster makeup on my face. An ugly rugby player in drag. I've got no feeling in my bum. <laughs>